I think you guys are going to like this project. This is a project that could be good to do any time of the year. And um, it's a great project that could be awesome for gift, for gift giving. Okay. I love getting anything with photos on it. Right. I love, I love memory keeping. I love all of those things. So I'm going to show you today how I like to um, add photos um, not actual photos. We're going to do something with them um, to, I call them, these are, I call them hexi blocks. They're hexagon shaped blocks. Let me show you what they look like. This is what they look like. I did it, went ahead and did a little bit of pre-painting today. Hi, Tony. Hello. Hi, Sandy. <laughs> so this is what they look like, right? Chunky hexagon blocks. I like hexes. I like the shape of them. Um, I like that, that we can kind of use them almost like building blocks. Okay. So um, what I want to show you here is I went ahead and did some pre-painting. I am painting all of these white, stark white, stark white, because I want my photos to be just spot on with their color, right? I don't want anything to alter the color. You could do this on the natural wood if you want to, but for the purposes of what I'm showing you today, I really wanted to paint these blocks, okay? So I used my country chic paint here, um, and the color is Simplicity. I wanted a pure white. It's kind of like napkin art, what we're going to do today. And this is going, this white, this stark white, it's called Simplicity, it's going to really just kind of show like a spotlight through our photo, okay? And I'll talk a little bit more about the photos here in just a minute. So the first thing I did is I just painted these out. I'm going to have three of them. I'm going to make three of them here with you today. Okay. Now, the cute thing about these is, like I said, you could actually do a photo block for every single member of the family, right? If you wanted to. And you could mount these. You could hang them if you wanted to put them on the wall or mount them on something. And you can just keep adding as the family grows. You can just keep adding to it. And almost in a way, looks like a family quilt, <laughs> right? Super cute. Now, the other thing that's fun about these is they can be stacked, right? So hexagons, the way they kind of fit together, depending on how many you're using, right? Depending on how many you're using, you can kind of actually create them in a way like this, where you can kind of stack them like building blocks. I kind of like them separated a little bit. I think that looks kind of fun. Or you can simply just stack them, right? I know you can't really see that here. If you wanted to even just stack them even like that, you could. Um, cute little shelf sitters. Again, just something fun and cute. Last year, I actually made one of these into an ornament, a photo ornament. And so I, all I did is I put a little screw eye. Do you all know what a little screw eye is? It's got like a little ring on it. And you just screw it in right? And then I put some cute little greenery and ribbon and it was precious pictures. Um, it'd be really cute for, you know, really anything. They could be memory ornaments uh, and like in memoriam, if someone maybe has passed, you want to remember them at Christmas, make an ornament. It could be a baby's first Christmas, you know, I mean, it could just be anything that you want. Pictures with Santa. So these really make cute ornaments as well. Okay really, really fun. <laughs> Good morning, Susie. Hi, Holly. Good morning, everybody. So all I've done to start is paint these. And I'm going to walk you through my entire process today. Okay. And you'll have access to come back and watch this replay. If you're following me here on Facebook, um, just hit the follow button. That way I'll always pop up in your feed. But then you can get back to my homepage really easily. And there's a little video section. You can click on the little video section and all the video library comes up. So you'll see all the different videos I've posted here. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. And like I said, this is just one coat of paint. It's one coat of paint. I did paint the back, the front, the sides. Everything has been painted white. These can be double-sided. So you could put photos on each side if you choose to. So let's talk about the photos. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. These chunky hexagon blocks, I put the link to them in the description on this post. And then Cheryl's going to post it in the comments as well. They're super fun. And like I said, I think this could be a great um, memory type gift um, to give to someone maybe that has 
all the other things, <laughs> right? So I'm going to scoot this out of the way. And I'm going to bring this on the screen. <laughs> this is my tabletop ironing board. This is my little tabletop ironing board. We actually have a, a lesson on this. We made these in a craft and chat. Um, it is so awesome to be, just be able to pull it out and not have to run to the laundry room every time I need the ironing board or something like that. So this is a tabletop one, just fits on my tabletop. And then I also made one on, um, on a portable TV tray that just folds down and folds up. So that one's really nice too, but it is nice to have one just portable like this. So here's the deal about the photos. Okay. You guys ready? I did, I'm not using actual photos. I'm not using an actual photo that I printed out. I'm actually using photos that I have printed onto gift tissue paper. Okay. So this is tissue paper. Just want to show you here. This is tissue paper, just like gift tissue that you would put into a gift bag. And I've, photo, I've printed my photos onto this, just using my regular printer right here in the shop. Inkjet printer, nothing fancy. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through this process on exactly what I do step by step. Okay. I love the look of this. It's going to look more like a transfer um, than like putting on just a, a slapping on a picture, a photo. Okay. <laughs> All right, so first thing, step one. Yes, it's, this is just using regular gift tissue paper, okay? Now, gift tissue paper like this, the white paper, honestly, the cheaper, the better. You can get it wherever. Um, tissue paper has a tendency to have like a matte side and kind of a shiny side, okay? So we're always going to print on the matte side. I've found that the ink does better on the matte side, which is the more dull side, not the shiny slick side. Okay. First thing to, to remember. So I used my, uh, my paper cutter. If you don't have a paper cutter, you just need a sheet of copy paper. Okay. You could lay this copy paper out onto your gift tissue, trace around it and cut it out. We need it to be the same size as our copy paper. So I just use my paper trimmer for that. Um, and then you're going to cut however many you think you're going to use, right? I have a couple of them here. Okay. So I like using the tissue paper better than the tracing paper. It's thinner. I, I just like it better. Yeah. Okay. So I do like this better than tracing paper, Belinda. Okay. The more that you start playing with these techniques, that's when you start to learn what you like best. <laughs> and I have done this technique a few times, sometimes on tracing paper, um, sometimes on gift tissue. There's different things, rice paper. I mean, there's all kinds of things. But when it comes to photos, I'm really leaning towards the gift tissue. I really like the gift tissue. Okay. So... Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces that I've cut and you can, like, you can stack them up together if you want to. And I'm going to take my iron because gift tissue typically is folded, right? So it has little creases and wrinkle, you know, kind of like little crease lines in it. So I'm using my little Aliso, um, iron here, which I absolutely love this iron. Um, I got it on Amazon, comes in different colors. I chose yellow and I, I love it. So I have it on its highest, hottest setting, which is typically cotton, like the highest, hottest setting, no water. That's very important. No water, no steam has to be a dry iron. Okay. And I'm going to come in and that's just going for it, this whole entire technique. Okay. So I'm coming in and I'm actually ironing my tissue paper. Okay. I'm ironing over my tissue paper. It's going to help it um, to get the little creases out, um, which are typically in, you know, in it because of how gift tissue is folded up in the packaging. So I'm just ironing over these couple pieces. You can do more than one piece at a time. And what's kind of fun about this is by ironing it, you're going to make it staticky. It's going to become staticky. And we actually like that. That's a good thing. Okay. We want the static. 
So my next step is to take my copy paper. This is just the copy paper that goes into my printer. Let me take this apart real quick. Very staticky. Very, see, it's trying to stick to me. It's staticky from the iron. <laughs> now, I'm going to put this down onto the copy paper, and it's just going to suck it. It's going to, like, suck right to it. Suck is probably not a good word. Cling. It's going to cling to it. <laughs> It's going to cling to it. And the trick here is I want you to make sure that the shiny side is down and the dull side, the more matte side is up. Okay. Everybody got that? <laughs> it's just going to cling. It's just going to grab onto this sheet of copy paper. One sheet of, of gift tissue, one sheet of copy paper. Okay. All right. <laughs> It's going to cling to it. And I like using, you. Can, if you need to use like a piece of scotch tape, if that's all you have, you can. I like to use um, washi tape because it's just a paper tape. It's pretty forgiving. You're going to make sure that your sheet is lined up with your uh, copy paper. And I'm just going to put a little bit right here at the top. You don't have to put it everywhere. I'm going to fold it over. And this is going to help to be sure that these two pieces of paper stay together. Okay, this is just washi tape, paper tape. If you can use a little bit of painter's tape, don't feel like you have to put tape everywhere. You really don't. You just need it up here where it's going to feed through your printer. Okay, just need it where it's going to feed through your printer. So now I go to the printer. Okay. I go to the printer. Now, everybody's printer is a little different. My printer feeds in like it needs to be face down and then it goes through and it comes up face up. OK, so depending on if you're not sure which way your printer prints, you can always just do right on a piece of copy paper. Just draw like a like a A, B. Right. And and stick it in. Put A on one side and B on the back side and stick it through your printer. Just print something and see which side it prints on, okay? That way you'll know which way to lay your paper, okay? So now this goes into my printer with it for my printer upside down. I need the tissue paper to be on the bottom and it's gonna go through my printer like this and it's gonna print out and come out on the tray like this where the tissue paper's on the top, okay? Everybody got that part? Now, when it comes out, this is what happens. This is what it looks like. It's going to come off the printer like this. I don't have a fancy printer, okay? It's just an inkjet printer. I don't have a um, laser printer. I don't have any of that. I just have a regular inkjet printer. So when this comes off, okay, it could be a little bit wet. So be cautious, just print one sheet at a time. Okay, I usually just run one at a time. Um, take it off, just put it to the side and let it dry on its own. We're gonna let it dry. My camera's being a little fuzzy here, but I think you can see that okay. I chose to print my pictures in color. I'm actually gonna make these blocks for my oldest daughter today. She is a teacher and these are her three kids. These were their back to school photos. So I'm going to use those today. Um, you can cut the tissue paper with scissors or a trimmer. Um, this is actually what I use when I'm cutting mine. I have one of these Fiskars uh, guillotine cutters. So that's usually what I'm, this is usually what I'm using to cut my tissue paper. And if you know you're if you know you're going to make several, just go ahead and cut it all. You know, because you can cut several layers at one time if you're using a, a paper cutter like that. If you don't have a paper cutter at all, I would just take a piece of copy paper and just lay out your sheets and just trace it, um, and then you can just cut them out with scissors. Okay, Michelle, does that help? Okay. <laughs> now, because and you can see here's my my little piece of washi tape here. Here's the piece of um, copy paper right here. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully peel off my tape. And because this was done on an inkjet printer, I need to heat set it. 
Okay, I'm going to heat set it. I can't just trust that if it dries on its own, that the ink is going to be set. Okay, I don't want to put this onto my block and the ink start to run. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. You can take your, you, this is my tissue paper here. Let me hold it up like this so you can see. It really is. It's printed on tissue paper, right? See how they look? Now, when you see it like this, but when you put white behind it, then they become more clear. That's why I painted my blocks, my hexi blocks, white. Okay? So this is it on the tissue paper. Um, what I'm going to do is lay this down on my little ironing table here, my little portable ironing table here. I'm going to take another sheet of copy paper. So there's a sheet underneath it right now. Let me show you, sorry. Come on, come on. There's a sheet underneath it right now, and I'm gonna put a sheet on top of it, okay? And I'm gonna bring my iron back. The iron's coming back, and I'm just going to heat set the ink. Do this when the ink is already dried on its own, okay? It just takes a minute. It doesn't take long. Um, it's not going to take any time for it to dry. But now what we're doing is we're heat setting it. We want to heat set this ink so that it won't run when we put it on our hexagon blocks or anything for that matter. You could decoupage photos on, on photo tissue <laughs> on anything. Okay. So any questions at this point? I love using tissue paper. You can use it for not just photos. Maybe you want to do, maybe you have a college kiddo and you want to do something cute to put in their stocking for Christmas, right? You could find their mascot online and just print it, print it onto tissue. And, um, you know, make sure it's sized, whatever size it needs to be. That'd be really, in fact, that's really a cute idea. Maybe I need to do that. Be really cute. Okay, so highest, hottest setting on your iron, no water. I cannot stress that enough. It needs to be a dry iron, no water, no steam. Okay, no water, no steam. All right, so this one should be good to go. I printed, a, I have another one here that I printed as well. Um, this is really not a hard process. And um, it's definitely one, like if you've never done it before, this is something you should probably just do your first one as a practice. Maybe just go get like a little cheap canvas board or something, just something to kind of practice on. And again, I'm going to sandwich this between two pieces of copy paper. And yeah, you could probably use parchment paper or something, but you're going to have the copy paper right there. So I just use the copy paper. You're excited to try it, Estella? Yay, that's awesome. I've done this, you can do this with things like recipes. Maybe you have old photos or old documents or just, you know, recipes are really fun because I have a lot of hand written recipes that were my mom's or both my grandmother's. I even have some that were my great grandmother's. And, um, and yeah, before I've done this where you have printed on tracing paper, but the more that I do this, I'm realizing how much I really, really prefer the, the tissue paper because it's thinner. All right. So again, we don't want to speed through this process. We really want to just be patient. We just want to make sure this is all nice and heat set. Make sure to keep your iron moving. <laughs> we don't want to scorch the paper. So any questions about printing, about printing your photos or anything for that matter, okay, on the tissue paper. That's my daughter with her three kids. Isn't that cute? Okay. Black and white. 
You could print in black and white if you don't want to do these in color. You could do that as well, okay? Black and white is really pretty, elegant. Could be, um, sometimes black and white is a good choice when you're having trouble finding photos that you feel like work together or like maybe there's just too many colors. Like if you are going to do a family, um, you know, little family, family blocks, you know, things like that, printing them all in black and white or, or a, a, that grayscale or um, sepia even, you know, sometimes that's a great kind of unifier. So then you don't have to worry about, you know, what people have on. <laughs> okay. All right. So now I have my tissue. I'm ready to go. I'm going to take one. I'm going to take one of the hexi blocks here because the next thing I have to do is I have to figure out, you know, what part of the photo do I want on my block? So this is Emma right here. I'm going to put this on Emma. And here's a good thing too, because you've printed on the, on the tissue paper, you can actually see it from the back. And that is so helpful. Okay. That is super, super helpful. And I'm okay. I kind of like it when things don't have to be like lined up right smack in the middle. Um, so this way I can kind of see where my photo is going to land here. Okay. So a couple different ways we could do this. You can kind of crease it. That's what I've been doing. Just kind of taking my fingers around it to, to crease it and cut it, or if it's easier to crease it and then come and line it up. So I creased it. Now I'm gonna line up my block where it needs to be, because creasing sometimes is, is hard to see. And I'm gonna use my uh, friction pen for this. Sorry, I'm trying to find the, there it is, friction, friction pen for this. And I'm just gonna trace around the block because that's gonna be easier to see. But if you'll do it from the back, then you can tell exactly where the photo is going to go, which part of the photo you're trying to capture, and how you want to capture it on your block. And now I have a trace line on here, which is going to make it really easy to see. So now I'm just going to come in and cut. Now, anytime you trace something, okay, anytime you trace something, yeah, you want to print on the dull side of the tissue paper. I have found that that works best, especially if you're using inkjet printers, okay? The dull side or matte side. And most tissue papers do have kind of a, a shiny side and a matte side. Okay, so let's see how this is going to look. Oh my gosh, look how cute that is. <laughs> Isn't that precious? This is Emma Kate. <laughs> so cute. So I'm going to sit here and do this with my photos here. So uh, like I said, my oldest daughter is a teacher. Um, this year she's teaching fourth grade for the first time. She's normally taught third grade for years. And these were back to school photos of her kids and her. And I thought, oh, these would be so cute because she could have these in her classroom if she wanted to or have them at home. I think they'd be cute to have in her classroom. So I chose to print them in color. So again, can everybody see what I'm doing? I'm pressing down because this is going to give me these little pressure lines so that when I turn this over, I can see exactly where to put my block. Okay, I can line that up right within those pressure lines. And now I'm going to come in and actually do a line that I can see better to cut with my friction pen. And the friction pen will disappear with heat, so I don't have to worry. I use it all the time. So even though I'm using the hexagon blocks just because they're just they're just fun, right? They're fun. Um, I love the shape. 
but you could do this with any wood blocks. We carry four by six wood blocks, four by four, three by fours. Um, and it just looks really cool because it, it is, again, it's more like a transfer technique. It looks like it's kind of part of the block versus just putting an actual photo on a block. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, let's see how Mackenzie's going to look. This is Mackenzie Lynn. Look how cute that is. I love it. All right, now we got to get Caden. So again, I'm going to turn it upside down so I can really see here. Kind of like some of the school buses in this. They took their back to school pictures at the bus barn where all the school buses are. <laughs> kind of fun. So again, I'm going to press. This is also could be fun for photo cards, you know, if you ever wanted to do photo cards or something. And uh, you could put them on cardstock or tags. I mean, oh, let's do it like this. Usually when I do try to cut it from the, the uh, pressure lines, the creases, I wind up upset because it, it is hard to see them and I'll cut something wrong. So it really is best to trace them out. So these blocks can be double-sided. You can put photos on the other side too. So this is what I think I'm going to do for Rachel, my daughter Rachel, is I'm going to put the kids' pictures on one side, and then on the other side, the back side, I'm going to do pictures of her with each kid. And then she can just mix and match and turn them whichever way she wants. Okay, so now we have these. If you're nervous, right? Like if you're nervous about this, if you want to go back and even iron them again, you can. <laughs> okay, so you can iron them again um, very easy. Okay, any questions about just the, the tracing and cutting and all of that? Pretty easy to do. It really is. I'm excited for y'all to try printing on tissue paper. Um, printing photos, actual photos on tissue paper. It really is a fun thing to do. Okay. All right. You guys ready to put them on the blocks? Sorry, I just moved everything around. I moved my mat and it moved everything else. <laughs> yeah, isn't it fun? It really is fun. And this is not a hard thing to do. Honestly, if you just follow the steps I'm telling you, anybody can do these. Anybody can do these. Um, I'm going to post a picture later of the Christmas ornament that I made. Um, I have a little video of it just kind of twirling, really fun. Um, so photo ornaments, things like that could be really fun. Um, okay, so what's going to happen next is we're going to use some Mod Podge, much like we're, if we were doing napkin art, okay? Most of you follow me um, for napkin art tips and advice and ideas among other things. I do other things as well. But um, so basically the technique for this is a lot. We're going to treat this as if it was the tissue of a napkin. Okay. Yeah. Mod Podge matte is what I'm using for this. Let's start with Emma. We'll start with the, the baby of the group here. All right. Everybody good? Okay. All right. I mean, the other thing I thought about would be really cute. I was thinking about this for me. Um, I've done these before and I did them in black and white. And I did like my, mainly the faces of like each of my grandkids. And I love to put them out this time. Of, well, I have them out anyway, but I love to put them out like on my tear trays with my fall things because it's kind of like reminds me. They're like, you know, things I'm thankful for, right? The people in my life I'm thankful for. So you could even um, add the little photo blocks into some of your fall decor for gratitude or thankfulness um, on your table at Thanksgiving could be really cute. Um, I think there's lots of ways that you could incorporate these and use them. Okay. I have not tried the Mod Podge Ultra Matte. I want to try it though, because people have been asking 
Um, so yes, I'm going to have to try it and give it, give it my little test and see how I like it. <laughs> and I do plan to, I do plan to try it. So I'm going to put just a nice kind of thin, you know, nice even coat here. You're going to want to make sure that it looks wet all over. And now I'm just going to kind of position Boop, 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 boop. Position this the best that I can around the edges. Okay, you can kind of pat it. I got it a little bit off, but again, I think it's okay. Again, because we painted it white, <laughs> it can be very forgiving. All right, so I'm going to use my plastic wrap here, my plastic sheet, and I'm going to start kind of in the center and just kind of smooth and then smooth outward. Anything that kind of hangs over the edge, we can always sand off. Now you really want to smooth this down because we want it to be part of the wood and wood has a grain to it, right? It has a little bit of a grain to it. So I don't really, I'm, you know, if I wanted this to look like a photo, I would have just cut out a photo and glued it on. That's not what I'm, that's not my goal here. I want it to look more like a transfer and look like it was kind of printed onto the wood, right? So let's press, make sure it's really down in all the little grooves of the wood. Oh, okay, and I'm gonna try to kind of hold it. I don't know if you can tell. Let's do it over here. There you go. Okay, do you see how you can kind of, because I only put one coat of paint underneath it, so that there's still, do you see how you kind of see the grain? from the wood. So it's going to look like it was printed on the wood. And that to me is super cool. Okay. Isn't that neat? Yes. Heat set the image. It, it You know, again, because um, you have to heat set the ink is actually what you're doing. You're heat setting the ink. I'm just going to sand off any little bit. Like if I didn't get it quite lined up. Plus, Keep in mind, anytime you trace something, it's going to wind up when you cut it out, it's going to be a little bit bigger than what you're putting it on. So we'll just trace this up. I mean, uh, sand this. You can even sand it a little more. I kind of like that too, because again, I want it to look like it's part of the wood. So you can kind of distress the edges a little bit more with sandpaper. And then it really is going to look like it's part of the wood. Okay, just kind of distressing along those edges. It's really going to make it look like it's part of the wood. Okay, all right, let's move on. Let's do, we'll do McKenzie next. So it is kind of important. You can kind of look here. Again, see how the wood grain, I only put one coat on. And this way I can kind of see how the wood grain is going. And let's see if I could do a better job of lining up. Here we go. Almost. Okay, pretty good there. And again, just tap. And then we're going to use our plastic wrap. Start in the center. And smooth outward. Okay. Anybody have questions? Yeah, Karen, you've got to make sure you heat set the ink, especially if you have an inkjet printer. You've got to heat set the ink, no matter what you're printing. <laughs> okay. I love the added texture. That's the whole point of doing this on wood blocks is because then they look like they're, they really look custom. They look like they were printed onto the wood, um, like specialty, right? Very unique. Just imagine doing like one of your grandmother's 
handwritten recipes on a wood block, right? Or a couple of them on each side and then decorate, you could decorate the edges. We're going to decorate the edges of these as well. Just imagine how, how, what an awesome gift that would be to give to somebody. They could have it on display in their kitchen. So it doesn't have to just be photos. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and dry this just a little bit. It was a little heavier with my Mod Podge this time. And then I'll sand off edges. Just like we did on Emma's. The grittier your, your sandpaper is, the more you can kind of distress corners and edges if you want to. It just depends. Some of us really kind of like that look. <laughs> And it is kind of fun, especially, like I said, since we want it to appear like part of the wood. Okay, y'all ready to look at Mackenzie? There she is, printed on wood. Doesn't that look great? <laughs> They're so cute. All right, let's do Caden. And like I said, I think it'd be fun. I would do these double-sided, right? I would definitely do these double-sided. Let's look at the wood grain again. I kind of like to look at it and see kind of which direction it's going. Who's going to try this? Who's going to try this? Let me know in the comments. Barely touch it down. Yes, good. Oh, it would be so great for wedding photos. Yeah. You could even do a keepsake ornament. And again, if you don't get it lined up too well, please don't worry about it. Because if you do come in and sand those edges, it just blends everything kind of in. This is my oldest grandson, Caden, who should still be a little guy. He just started his first year of high school, ninth grade. I can't believe it. I don't know where, I don't know how to, to slow down time. <laughs> if any of you can figure out how to slow down time, please let me know. One oh, little wrinkle right here. Let's see if I can get that out. Oh, maybe that's not. I must be on the picture. Okay. Cute, cute, cute. But you don't have a printer? You, um, If you want to, you could probably use one maybe at an office supply place or a printer, a printing place like, a, what is it, Kinko's or maybe even UPS, FedEx places. Usually you can pay to use their copy machines uh, or printers. Um, I think the... Can't you even do do that at the library if you don't have a printer? Or better yet, Tammy, do you have a friend that has a printer? <laughs> I bet if you have a friend that has a printer, they wouldn't mind you borrowing theirs. Cute, cute boy. He's going to hate that I showed this. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> okay. All right. 
So what would I be doing next? Well, what I would be doing next is I would be doing a photo on the back side, but I'm not going to do that. I think you've got the gist of how this is going to go now, but I did want to show you one more thing. Now, if you want to remember, this is just tissue paper. So I want to make sure these are completely dry. I want to make sure the underneath coat of Mod Podge is completely dry. Sometimes you're going to think it's dry, but if you feel of your project and it feels a little bit uh, clammy, just kind of kind of cool, clammy, let it dry a little bit longer. OK, and then you can put on a top coat. I'm not going to do my top coat probably till the very end because I want to I want to decorate these just a little bit more. So I'm going to come back to Emma here. Now, I happen to know that my daughter, um, her, she has a lot of primary colors in her classroom, but at home, she's very neutral. She loves all the neutral things. She doesn't have a lot of pops of color. So I decided to just use a black and white napkin. Okay, this is just a black and white napkin. Some of you might want to use ribbon or something like that. Um, but I figure this would look cute in her classroom with her other primary colors, or it'll look cute at home, depending on where she wants to use this. So if you're gifting something, think about what the, the person you're giving it to. Think about what their tastes are and what they like. OK, so I'm going to take I just cut these into strips the same width. Well, actually, it's a little tiny bit smaller because I didn't want to have to sand it. So a tiny bit smaller and look how cute this is going to be. I'm going to add this around my hexi block here. OK, so um, I'm just going to start here. I'll do about half. I'll do three sides at a time. And I'm just going to run this kind of right down the middle of the roadway. Think of it like a roadway here. And look how cute and decorative this will be. So you could do different colors if you want to. I think they make great Christmas gifts. And like I said, I've, done, I've made ornaments from these hexi blocks that are really cute. I'm going to definitely post a, a video. So I, I have a video of one and uh, pictures of one so you can see. Now, make sure you're on a nonstick craft mat because we, you know, we're going to be kind of moving this around and we want to make sure it's not going to, to stick, right? Or better yet, let's just be safe and dry it. <laughs> let's just be safe and dry it, right? These also could be cute little pumpkins if you wanted to do like an orange napkin around the outside or you wanted to paint the outside orange, do a cute little stem and a leaf and it could be, you could make your own little pumpkin patch of people, people in your family. That would be really cute. So I think there's a lot of, there's so many creative uses. I just think there's so many things you can do. Oh, I wanted to show y'all one more thing too. I'll do that here in just a second. So do you see, I'm just kind of, just literally just kind of lining this up right along the middle. It's going to be a little bit longer than I need. If you're using your plastic wrap, you can use the same piece of plastic wrap as long as it doesn't have any wet Mod Podge on it. So like if you used one side of it, you could use the other side. Always make sure when you're using plastic wrap that it is dry. It cannot have any wet Mod Podge on it. And, and it will because you see it just comes up through, comes up through the napkin. It's also going to come up through the tissue paper. Okay. So let's dry this and then we'll sand off the excess piece. But my daughter's going to love this. I know she will. She'll like the black and white. And then, like I said, it'll be cute. She can use it in her classroom or wherever. I still just need to add pictures on the back. <laughs> oh, Lori, definitely. Very cute Christmas gifts, right?
So then we're just gonna sand off our little excess piece. And there we have it. Isn't that cute? So they'll all kind of have, they, like I said, they could be different if you want them to be different. I'm gonna make hers all the same because I know how she is and I know what she likes. <laughs> Aren't those cute? So I'll put, my plan is just the kid here and then a picture of my daughter and Emma here. And I'll do that the same on these. So just Mackenzie and then Rachel and Mackenzie, just Caden and then Rachel and Caden. That'll be really cute. Yes, aren't they fun? Okay, let's go ahead and do one more. Very, very fun. That could be, you could decorate them in lots of ways. So I like cutting these just a little bit smaller, just a tiny bit smaller than they need to be. I don't have to sand as much. Okay, questions. Anybody have questions? Thank you, Marlene, for saying that. I want your projects to turn out fabulous every single time. So that's why I just, I know people... I know lots of people out there in this industry say, oh, your, your sessions can't be longer than this much. You lose attention. And I'm like, well, how, how can you how can you share all the important information in 30 minutes? <laughs> I just can't do it. So that's why I love that there are replays that you guys can always come back and watch the replays. So if you can't stay on as long, you can always come back and watch the rest later. But if I don't give you all the information and all the tips and tricks, your projects won't turn out fabulous like I want them to. Okay, so remember that one more thing I was going to show you guys. Um, I wanted to show you how cute these also look on stands. So let me finish. Let me finish Miss McKenzie here. And then I'll show you. Okay, Dee, don't worry if you missed the beginning because you can go back and watch the replay right after this is over. Okay? What size did you print the pics? I kind of just, I kind of looked at the hexagons and kind of just measured them out. And then I just made sure to, um, you know how you can, you can kind of, you can take your pictures and, and you know, enlarge them, whatever. And I just tried to make sure that whatever part of the picture I wanted to capture I made sure the picture was bigger than that. So sometimes now it kind of depends if you have a picture that's just a headshot. Um, you may want to pick a picture that has a little bit more area behind it or around it because it is nice to be able to kind of kind of uh, blow that up and manipulate it to whatever size you kind of feel like you need it to be, depending on what you're going to put it on. If you're going to put it on like a four by four by six block, well, then that's easy. You just need to print. You need to make sure that it's four by six inches. <laughs> right. But for these hexagons, it was a little trickier than that. So you can see kind of the sizes I used here. Like this would have been a normal four by six, but I, I just expanded it and made it a little bigger because I wanted to be sure, you know, I'm just trying to kind of capture him. 
This one right here is all four of them together. And again, it's just kind of making sure what you think will kind of fit. Does that make sense? So you have to kind of play around with it a little bit. You just kind of play around with it. So just know kind of your measurement here to here and here to here. And if somebody's probably going to ask me that, I should probably tell you what the measurements are. <laughs> okay, so on these hexes, it's three and a half inches tall by four inches wide. Okay, so that should help you three and a half inches this this way and four inches from point to point this way. Okay. Okay, I hope that helps. Aren't these cute? Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. We have these little candlestick stands. This one's painted white. We have two sizes. They actually come as a set. So there's like a taller one and a smaller one. And these are really cute if you wanted to actually give some of them height. Look how cute that is. See, so if you wanted to actually stand them, um, if you're just going to do kind of a little arrangement of them, it's kind of nice having levels. And then, of course, as I mentioned, um, let me lay these out again here. If you wanted to attach them to something, they would make such a cute pattern, right? So as you're doing these, if you're doing more and more and more, more family members, you just add them in. You just keep adding them in. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you kind of have a family wood. It almost looks like a quilt, like a family quilt. <laughs> okay. Yes. So what is left to do to these? Well, after I get my photo on the back side, I just need to seal them. And this is something that you can do either by putting on just a light coat of a, just a thin coat of Mod Podge or you can spray seal them if you prefer to just spray like a clear um, acrylic spray on them you can do that too okay we want to protect them we have to remember that even though it looks like they're printed onto the wood right she looks like she's actually printed on the wood there um, it is just tissue so we need to make sure that gets protected aren't they cute I just love how, how it looks. It looks like it's literally been printed onto the wood, like a, like a fancy schmancy transfer specialty item. And I just absolutely love it. Isn't that amazing? 